let's take a look at our top selections. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number nine at Aqueduct on Saturday. One of three stakes races on the card is the Forever Together stakes for Phillies and Mares. Let's take a peek at this field. We're going a mile and a 16th on the inner turf. Before we get started, I want to remind you, those Black Friday deals are available at DRF.com. Beginning Thanksgiving Day, you can save on your favorite DRF products. Visit shop.drf.com to access Interesting field because it's such a big field, Mike. I mean, the morning line favorite, and deservedly so, is the 12 tap it today. Not a good pose position at all for this one. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not a great post. I, I can see her being the favorite, Dan. She makes plenty of sense in this race. Um, I don't know. I feel like you could make cases for a lot of horses in here, but um, it, it felt to me anyway, and, and I, maybe you look at it totally differently. I had it down to, you know, three or four horses that I was interested in. The rest, I, I really didn't have much use for we have a couple of horses that are stepping up in class. They have to prove it. Horses like Tappet today, horses like Feel Glorious, horses like Shalur. These horses have earned figures in races comparable to this, and they can easily win. So I see what you're saying there. I think pace is going to be a very important component to this race. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Now, the nine, my heart belongs to, to daddy's got to go, right? I mean, this is a horse that I know she came from last for mm -hmm. Chad in 2019. She's run three times for Jorge Abreu. They haven't fooled around. They put her right in the front. And I would say, why wouldn't they do that here? Yeah, I don't know that they would necessarily want to change anything. At, at least it doesn't seem like there'd be any reason to. Now, she has basically gotten loose on some really slow paces um, in those races. And and as you've already pointed out, it's not like she needs the lead to be effective. I mean, she was actually pretty good for Chad um, as a closer, but she also got herself into a couple of messes trying to, to rally from off the pace. And they don't have that problem. They just put her on the front. I do think the six I'll handle the cash might be the early deterrent if she does not make the lead, simply because she's stretching out in distance and she's shown tactical speed sprinting. She's a solid horse for Ray Handel. Yeah, I think she's a little bit underrated as a turf sprinter. I don't know what we're going to get from her in this race, Dan, is they just step her up here um, to run against some you know better horses going longer and stretch her back out. I mean, she hasn't gone long on turf since her debut. She didn't run well that day. If this pace livens up, I think Medita might be able to work out a trip from mid-pack saving ground. I just draw a line through that last race. That's what I'm doing, at least. It was a race or synthetic debut. She didn't seem to like it at all. Her prior races on turf, okay, not great, but she's earned figures. At least that race two starts back, and the race four back was okay as well. That puts her in the mix. Yeah, I guess the race two back, um, if nothing else, was a pretty nice rebound there where she was second best at Kentucky Downs. Um, when she won that race at Belmont in June, she actually looked good winning that day, Dan. She had a perfect trip um, tracking an overmatched horse on the lead and just took over and, and blew that field away. She was awful in her next start, though. It makes me wonder how good she is. Simplicity is the number two, and Christophe Clement's got a few horses in this race. Simplicity is one he's taken his time with. She really faced some okay horses in France in 2019, not the creme de la creme, but some decent runners. And she won her North American debut like they could do something with her. She came right back off a two month break in this race, an optional claimer, and she ran okay again to finish second to traipsing. The fifth place horse came back to run third in a New York bred turf stake with an 85 buyer. This horse has some tactical speed. They've kind of taken it easy with her from a race standpoint. She likes, I guess, it's time between races, but I don't think she's out of it. I don't either. I, I think she's one of the bigger prices on the morning line that I would like to leave open and try to use her somewhere. Um, she didn't beat a good field um, in her stateside debut at Saratoga, but she did some good things there. I mean, wide off of a slow pace um, and closed that field down. I thought she ran pretty well that day, and then she came back last time. I thought she ran well again, Dan. Her stable mate traipsing just got loose on the lead and had something left in the stretch. I'm one of the dangerous sleepers in this race is up next. That's the three Sorrentina Lemon. This horse showed some ability last year as a three-year-old. I liked her effort in the winter memories when she was beaten by Feel Glorious. It was a yielding turf. She came wide into the stretch and she ran. Let's watch her last race. I don't know what happened. I was expecting a lot more. She didn't fire in this race. She didn't. Um, it's, it's very concerning, um, the form that she's come back in so far this year, Dan, because I agree with you. Her first three starts were all good, and it looked like she had some you know, some real talent and maybe some upside to, to do some good things this year, but it took her a long time to get back to the races. She did not run well at Kentucky Downs. I know that she only missed by a nose, Dan, but she was heavily favored to win that day, um, and she lost without an excuse, and then she came back and was bad last time. I just don't have a lot of confidence in her right now feel glorious, you know you're going to get a good effort from her. She's just really consistent. And if not for a couple of trips here or there, her record overall would be a lot better than it is. And it's still pretty good, five for 18. The Athenia was the race that Tappet today won. And feel glorious just buried down inside in the upper stretch. And by the time she got out, it was too late. 
Yeah, that's true. And it also just wasn't a race where you wanted to be closing. And I, just, I felt like the closers, when I watched that race back anyway, I just felt like the closers were badly compromised that day. Um, you know, I don't think you could make that excuse for her noble damsel too bad because that was a really fast pace, but she didn't break well that day. I think that really cost her. You got to get her into position. Um, and I think if she gets into position, she will fire a good shot in this race. Um, it's a, she's a very nice fit in here. She already, we already know she likes the Aqueduct Turf Course, a two-time stakes winner here over this distance. There's a lot to like about her. Now, up next is Shalur, and you mentioned the uh, perfect sting and there being a good pace on. Shalur was up close to that pace, and I thought she ran okay just being run down by Field Glorious, but I expected more last time out in the Noble Damsel. And I know that pace seems fast, 44 and 4. Those, you know, blowout uh, and sweep by and by, they were right up on the pace, and they're still there. This was flattened out in the lane. Yeah, it, she didn't. I didn't think that was her best race uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And I personally didn't love her perfect sting either, Dan, because um, she just got right up close to the pace there with a, you know, the horse that was supposed to be on the lead totally missed the start. Yep. And it sort of just left her sitting there on a perfect trip. Um, you know, it's not like it was a terrible performance, but she didn't have any excuse, I didn't think, not to win that day. And so that makes me, she's another one. It makes me wonder how good she is. And it's not like she's going to be some kind of great price in here. We mentioned I'll handle the cash in the opener. She's expected to be one of the primary pace setters. She would not mind a little bit of give in the ground as well. She runs well on good or off turf. Yeah. She ran well in this race. The Floral Park last time out going six furlongs over soft turf at Belmont. She ran an okay third. She hasn't exactly gotten back to her summer form in her last few races, and the yeah. distance is a question mark. Yeah, I mean, I like her as a horse, but I just like her as a sprinter. She can also be, it's also worth at least noting that she can be very quirky. So she is going to need the right kind of trip. Um, to run her very best race here. And even if she runs her best race, I don't know if I think she can beat this field going along. I'm not going to sleep completely on the seven. No mo lady. Mike Michael Trombet is just a good trainer. He ships in with a purpose. This horse ran in the Gallaret last time out, overmatched against the likes of Juliet Foxtrot and Varenka. But let's watch that race turning into the stretch. I understand why Pimentel kept her down inside, wanted to save as much ground against yeah. those sharp horses. She kind of got bottled up, and she's running on at the end of this race over a boggy going. She's run well on firm turf in the past. She's a well-bred horse that probably just needs a trip to, to be in the mix. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with her turf races. She's run well in all of them. Stakes placed in three straight races. Um, there's no there To me, anyway, there are no excuses for any of those races. She just wasn't good enough to get it done, but she's run fine, and she's tactical. Story time, the number eight, first time John Kimmel, beaten by Tampa today at 80-1 to one last time out, and the Athenians got to do better. Yeah, I didn't see this horse being a contender in here. My heart belongs to Daddy. We talked about her. She's won three races this year for Jorge Abreu. All three starts. She's won twice in Aqueduct in the past. Let's watch the Ticonderoga. Boy, what an easy trip on the lead this was. She just got right to the front. She went 51 and a half. She's supposed to spur on home. She does. She's drifting out in upper stretch, and I don't know what that's all about, but she's run some fast races. I'm not sure that trip is available to her. I think they're going to try to get it, but I think she's going to have to go at least a little bit faster. Yeah, I mean, you would hope that they don't let her walk to the half in 50 or 51 this time. Um, it's supposed to be different. She's a talented horse, Dan. She's taken advantage to a certain extent in her three wins for Abreu, but she won well in those races. And again, she, going back to early in her career, she showed that she had talent. Things didn't always work out perfectly for her, um, but she's always been a good horse. I think Miss Tehran's a fascinating horse simply because this horse was a claimer in France yeah. earlier in her career. And then she comes off, what, almost a two-year layoff. And she's in Chad Brown's barn. She runs this race at Monmouth Park. Now, it wasn't the strongest competition, but the two-year layoff, folks. And she's kind of down inside. She's got a little bit of traffic. She's going to squeeze on through. Horse she ran th uh, the horse that she finishes right ahead of came back to win with an 89 buyer. They're shipping that horse uh, out to Southern California, running around Thanksgiving in a graded stake. Yeah, that's a stable mate of hers for Chad Brown. Um, listen, I, I don't know, you know what to do with her, really. Um, but when I watched that Mammoth race back, I just want to use her, Dan. Um, I, I thought she was best that day, and I think the trip got her beat there. She got into some traffic there around the second turn, in tight in the upper stretch as the winner just sort of opened up on that field, and then she couldn't catch her at the end. I thought she ran well, though. I want to use her. Platinum Painter can force the pace in here. Now, listen, she was claimed for 12500 out of this race, but I can understand giving a shot. She's won five out of her last six. When she wins, she wins by blowout margins, as she did in this race. She won by 10 to 2 to 5. This is an interesting barn. They win races. Um, yeah. She's going to have to prove herself against these kind of horses, though. It's interesting that they're going to step her up off the claim, because Jamie Ness, who got her on that good run, he never wanted to step her up in class. He just kept jamming her in there against claimers and taking the money. You liked Tappet today last time. You were rewarded. She was a nice price in there at 5-1, to one, and she ran really well. It's turned to the stretch. I like there was a lot of pace. Mitchell Rhodes, a quality horse on the lead. Tappet today was kind of just three wide all the way around there, and she yeah. digs down deep to win. Uh, she's a, a filly that really, a mare that really loves this distance, but 
It's an outside post. She's given away weight this time around. And instead of five to one, you might get five to two. Yeah, and that's really the only reason that I'm you know, going to try to beat her this time, Dan. I, I want to use her. I think she's a perfect fit in this race. And in a lot of ways, the horse to beat, she ran really well last time. But she does kind of feel like a last time is the time kind of horse. And now as the favorite, I'll try and beat her with somebody else. It's a good point to be sure as we take a look at our picks. I landed on her. I could probably use my top four picks in any kind of order. I just think the tap it today, we've always liked her. You actually cashed on her last time out. Maybe I missed my opportunity. Where are you going? I'm going to take Feel Glorious on top here and just hope she gets the right trip here and, and kicks through the stretch. If she gets the right trip, I think she could easily beat this field. Um, and it feels like she could be an okay price once again. I'm going to take her and I got the two Chad second and third. She's very, very consistent. Your top pick in this race. Three stakes races at Aqueduct on Friday. This one is the forever together. Good luck.